In order to estimate the secondary structure content of a CD spectrum using the multivariate secondary structure estimation program, a calibration model must first be created. The calibration model will be used to predict the secondary structure content of a measured CD spectrum. To open the calibration model program, open Spectrum Manager, scroll down to Analysis, and double click on CD multivariate calibration creation. Creating a model requires establishing a reference set, which is later evaluated to determine how well the model can predict unknowns. The reference set is a series of spectra that contain mixtures of known secondary structure contents. To begin, you can choose to either create a new model or edit one of the pre-existing models JASCO has provided with the software program. Either click File, New, or Edit, or select their respective icons in the menu bar. The CD multivariate menu box will now pop up. In the first tab, you can enter comments regarding the model, as well as specify the number of secondary structure components to be quantified, and select the concentration units and number of decimal places the analyzed components will be displayed in. The component name menu specifies the secondary structure components and can be edited. The JASCO multivariate software analyzes the sample spectra according to their alpha helical, beta sheet, turn, and other structure components. JASCO has provided a 26 protein reference set that can be used to create a calibration model. The known secondary structure content of the proteins in the JASCO reference set were obtained through X-ray crystallography data. While JASCO currently offers 26 proteins, up to 100 spectra data files can be uploaded. The more spectra and variety added to the reference set, the better the model can fit the measured CD spectrum and estimate the unknown secondary structure content. To access the available reference set, click Browse. If this is your first time uploading the reference set, choose the hard drive folder and select Program Files, JASCO, Spectrum Manager, Common, CD Option, CD Multivariate SSE, and Samples. Now choose a folder based on the units of the measured CD spectrum. Select the spectra to include and click Open. Now we can set up the calculation parameters. JASCO's multivariate software uses two multivariate regression analyses, principal component regression and partial least squares. While PCR only uses independent variables to predict secondary structure content or responses, PLS correlates the dependent and independent variables to predict responses. In this case, our independent variable is the instrument response or the CD spectra, while the dependent variable is the secondary structure content. This menu box allows you to specify the number of components or factors which can later be edited and optimized. The calculation range is the wavelength range of the reference spectrum. This range must match the wavelength range of the sample spectrum or the CD secondary structure estimation program will not open the sample spectrum. You can select whether to adjust the composition ratio of the quantified secondary structures to a specified percentage and or replace negative data values to 0% as well as if you'd like to display data units. A rejection value can also be selected. These last four parameters can be changed in the secondary structure estimation program as well. After clicking Finish, the new parameters and reference protein spectra will populate the calibration creation window. The known secondary structures for each protein spectra must be entered. If you have created your own reference set, the known secondary structure contents can be experimentally determined with another spectroscopic technique such as X-ray crystallography. Once the known contents have been determined, they can be entered by double-clicking the cell corresponding to the CD spectrum of the sample and typing in the secondary structure content value. If you use the preloaded reference set, the known secondary structure content values have already been specified. If you do not have your own reference set, it would most likely be easier to edit a pre-existing calibration model. To edit a pre-existing calibration model, click File, Open, or select the Open icon in the Menu tab. If this is your first time using the Calibration Model program, the Calibration Model folder will not be the selected folder.
To access the four preloaded JASCO calibration models, go to your computer's desktop, select Program Files, JASCO, Spectrum Manager, Common, CD Option, CD Multivariate SSE, and Calibration Model. You can now choose which model to work with. The four preloaded options differ based on the CD units the reference spectra are displayed in. Regardless of the reference spectra units, you will still be prompted to convert your data into units of molar ellipticity per residue if you have not already done so. After choosing a calibration model, you must now calculate your model based on the specified parameters. In the menu bar, select Model, Calculate, or choose the Calculate icon. To save your new calibration model, select File, Save As. Before we can estimate the secondary structure content of a spectrum, the principal components and partial least squares factors must be optimized. The optimization process evaluates the known versus estimated secondary structure concentrations. First, the scores and loadings matrices are obtained to determine how many components and factors should be retained. Principal components and PLS factors describe the direction where there is the most variance in the data, while the scores and loadings characterize that variance. For example, the first principal component describes the most variance in the data. The second principal component lies orthogonal to the first principal component. All vectors orthogonal to the first two components are then found for each reference spectrum. This new data is then transformed onto a new coordinate system where the value of each spectrum are called scores. To view the score vector, go to Model, and either choose PCR or PLS, and then Score Vector. The Score Vector window provides the plot of the scores for each spectrum for each principal component specified earlier. The table below gives the numerical scores corresponding to the graph. The score describes how much weight each component contributes to each spectrum, and the score vector graph makes this easier to visualize. The loading vector can be visualized by selecting Model, PCR, Principal Component, or PLS, Weight Loading Vector. The loadings describe the variation between the wavelengths and the components, or how much each component explains the variation of a spectrum. Therefore, the higher the loading of the wavelength onto a PC or factor, the more it contributes to that factor. Click the legend box to view the corresponding component or factor for each spectrum. Each secondary structure content has a tab which displays its corresponding loadings plot. Now we have to evaluate how closely our model predicts secondary structure values by comparing observed and predicted values. To do this, we use a correlation coefficient and root mean square error of prediction algorithm. First start by going to Model, and choose either PCR or PLS depending on which algorithm you wish to start with, and then select Correlation Coefficient versus Number of Principal Components or Factors. The Correlation Coefficient measures the linear correlation between two variables. The higher the correlation coefficient, the smaller the distance between two spectra, and the more identical they are. Therefore, select the correlation coefficient with the largest value and make note of its corresponding principal component or factor. If any correlation coefficient values are the same, choose the one corresponding to the least number of components. Now find the largest correlation coefficient for the rest of the secondary structure contents by clicking on the tabs at the top of the window. Once you've obtained the optimal number of components for each secondary structure using the correlation coefficient, go to Model, choose either PCR or PLS, and then select RMSEP first number of principal components or factors. The RMSEP is the root mean square error of prediction and assesses the predictive ability of the calibration model by comparing the predictions with the reference set. The smaller the RMSEP, the smaller the error between these predictions and reference set. To find the optimal number of components or factors, select the RMSEP with the smallest value and repeat for each secondary structure component.
During the optimization process, if you notice that the number of principal components or partial least squares factors are not the same for all secondary structures, choose the number that you acquire for a majority of the components. For example, if you obtain 10 components for helix and sheet structures, but only 4 for turn and 15 for other structures, choose 10 for the optimal number of principal components. Because known secondary structures are determined from X-ray crystallography data, the current reference data sets do not yet fully cover the fold space compared with X-ray structures. Therefore, secondary structure components with lower spectral amplitudes and more spectral variety are harder to predict. This is also why alpha helical samples with their large spectral amplitudes and limited spectral diversity typically have more reliable fits. If you first started the optimization process by determining the number of principal components using the correlation coefficient in RMSEP algorithms, you now have to optimize the number of partial least squares factors. If you started by optimizing the number of factors, repeat the process to optimize the number of principal components. To do this, go to Model, PCR, and select Correlation Coefficient versus Number of Principal Components or RMSEP versus number of principal components. For the partial least squares factor, select either correlation coefficient versus factor or RMSEP versus factor. Ideally, the number of principal components or partial least squares factors found by the correlation coefficient and RMSEP plots should be identical. For instance, for each secondary structure, the RMSEP plot should find the same components as the correlation coefficient plot. If they are not the same, vary the number of components while repeating the search for the optimal number of components until the correlation coefficient and RMSEP graphs obtain the same number of components. Do the same for the PLS factors if necessary. After finding the optimal number of principal components and partial least squares factors, the model parameters have to be changed to reflect these values. Click Settings in the Menu tab and then Parameters. Click Next until you reach the Calculation Parameters menu box. Enter the new component and factor values. Now recalculate the calibration model prior to saving. Now the calibration model can be validated. Go to Model, PCR, Leave One Out Cross Validation to validate the PCR model, or PLS, Leave One Out Cross Validation. JASCO uses a cross validation procedure that involves predicting a portion of the dataset using information from the remainder of the samples. One spectrum can be removed at a time, and the model can be determined using the remaining sample spectra. The model then goes on to predict the concentrations of the spectrum left out of the model. This procedure is repeated until all necessary spectra have been left out in turn. Since each data point in the validation plot corresponds to a reference spectrum, ideally each data point should lie along the calibration curve. If any points diverge dramatically, either change the number of factors and select the Apply button to recalculate, or omit that specific data point by selecting the point and then deselecting the checkbox corresponding to that sample. Keep in mind that if you choose to omit a spectrum from the reference set, the fit might be less satisfactory since there will be fewer reference spectra. On the top left of the validation plot, the correlation coefficient and RMSEP values are listed, which can also be used to evaluate the model. The validation must be done for each secondary structure, which can be selected by the tabs on the top. Repeat the validation procedure for the PCR model by selecting Model, PCR, Leave One Out Cross Validation. Once you have finished validating your calibration models, remember to save them by going to File, Save As. You are now ready to analyze the secondary structure content of your CD spectrum.